Uh, hello, I'm back again to carry on with the discussion of the uh, simulation mode in QTVLM. And the last time we were uh, we were sailing here, and we were under sail and heading that way. And um, but this time, what I want to do is the sailing is a is a very interesting and powerful training tool here. But let's, for the time being. Uh, we're going to uh, turn on the engine and go under power and study how the meters and the drive, various drive parameters work uh, for the navigation and then come back to pure sailing. But let's first, uh, let's first get started uh, just under power and let's just see where we left off here. Uh, okay, I'm going to turn the simulation mode on. I think we're where we were. Okay, and so we always start out head to wind. And that's the wind direction now. Oh, look. Okay. All right. So this is a good lesson. I'm just going to leave it, leave it and fix it right now. Look, we're head to wind. That's obviously no sailing speed. Yet it says we're going seven knots. And I know we recall, I recall what that was because we set a, we set a default that if we can't sail at three knots, then turn on the engine and go seven. So let's, let's undo that. But first you have to stop the simulator. In round numbers, you can't do anything with that simulator on. There's a few things you can do, but usually you have to shut the simulator off, do them, and then come back. So let's go back here, boat settings, uh, engine and tax, and sure enough, see, if, the, if we sail le less than three knots, it turns the engine on and goes seven. So let's just set this to zero, too. It doesn't really affect what we're doing. We're going to control the engine elsewhere. But this does uh, affect uh, some calculations of estimated positions in, in another display we're not doing now. But So we shut that off. OK, zero. OK. So now we're ready to go again. So we just turn the simulator on again, boat. Simulator on again. I can do that with a keystroke, and it, and sure enough, it starts head to wind. But now we're essentially not moving. So let me click this up here to get this controls over here. And now I can put the engine on. Now we have control over the engine here. So let's stop sailing. We're going to turn on the engine. So we're no longer sailing. We're going by now. It should go to three. Yeah. So now we're set, now we're under engine at three knots, and all the wind data is down here, and it's going to stay down here. I'm not hiding these instruments or anyway. That's real data. And as this clock ticks, click. You know, as we sit here, go one hour, two hours, whatever. Then this is loading in new grip files, new wind data. So we've got five days of wind data here, and it's going to faithfully keep up the put the right wind in at the right time, but we're under engine. So for the time being, I'm not even going to look out the window. I'm going to shut the wind off. So here we go. We're now driving a powerboat or our own sailboat under power. And we're going three knots. So let's start looking at some of these. I want to turn around and head towards this mark up here. And then let's... Um, Let's see, we've got a track on. Actually, let me stop this for a minute. I want to set up some things here. Let's go to, uh, oh, okay, I'm going to turn this. Actually, I'm going to turn the simulator off. Simulator off. I forgot I wanted to go in and check a few things. So you go boat, boat settings, and then go down here, other settings. And I just want to show you some things here. So we're going to be reckoning. We're going to put the COG predictor line that's going to show us where we are three minutes from now. It's going to be a line straight ahead in the direction of the course over ground. And we, we don't have current here. We don't have any current. And so for the time being, I'm actually even going to shut off the heading line because the heading line and the COG are the same line. So for now, let's just shut this heading line off. L later, we turn it on and make it a mile or half a mile or something. But right now, it's off. And it's very important, but not now. We shut it off. And so uh, we want, and then we're going to have a reckoning based on the boat speed. Later, we'll come back and make it a cone. This, you just want to set and leave it. Turn the track accuracy to very high with no limit. And we don't need to save it. When you're underway, you might save it or doing, doing some exercise quiz or something, you might want to save it, but we don't need to save it. So those are the main sa sailings now. We want to turn that off. Uh, this is three minutes. Now we can change this. You see, right now we just go up here. Oh, I can't show it to you, right? Okay, so that's okay. But you see, here's the three minutes. If I want to, if I want to change my predictor to six minutes, I just change that to six right there. So we're okay. We're good to go. 
and the time. And unless we've forced it to do something different, which I'll come to later, but everything happens in real time on the simulation. And the real time is this time right up here. It may not be. We may have advanced, you know, past real time, but uh, this is the time we're dealing with right here. Okay, so now we're ready. Let's go back to the simulation. Command S, no, uh, Option S. Okay, that's it. Now, are we going, okay, so we got the engine on. We're going three knots, and now we're, uh, let's turn around and head, head a little bit towards that mark. And so here's where you turn, the, here's where you drive the boat. You, you drive the boat with this control here. And this is a, you know, a slow turn and a little bit faster turn. And then this brings you centers the helm right there. So there you're going like that. But right now we're not, this boat doesn't even know that this, oh, it does exist. I must have activated this. Oh yeah, it's activated. See, if it's not activated, this is this this route that we set up here, a pathway, doesn't even know the boat's there or vice versa. But if you activate it, if you turn it on and activate it, then it becomes the, the point, it becomes the route you want to navigate. And it always starts with the first one here. And so um, this is route one. It says we're 20 minutes away from there. Now that's something I want to look into right away. Uh, so let's turn a little bit more and sort of go towards that mark. Okay, so let's stop there for the time being. And um, what do we've got here? Um, this is a COG is three minutes. So we're going. Oh, we're going pretty slow here, three knots. Let's crank it up and go six knots. Six knots is a mile in ten minutes. Mile in ten minutes. So let's, let's just check a couple things right away. This is predicting, this says we're going to be here in 9 minutes and 13 seconds. Now that's based not on 6 minutes, but that's based on this velocity made course. So it takes this speed, which we're going, this is basically where we're going to be in 6 minutes, and then you got to project that down to here. So that's a, the SOG, the 6 knots, is our speed in this direction up here, and then you go down to a 90 degree angle, this vector here, from here to here, is the speed you're making towards the mark. And we obviously are going to have to tack or turn or do something. We're not going to get there from here going this direction. But our progress in that direction is this. And that time that it's estimating we're going to be there is based on this number down here. But uh, let me do something. With, let's go up here. Well, no, no, I don't want to delete it. No. Right click this one, edit. And let's put, let's see, that's a 0.5 mile. Let's put two rings on there at 0.5 miles. Okay, good. So there's 0.5 miles. Now, at six knots, a mile is 10 minutes. So a half a mile here would be five minutes. So just for the heck of it, let's just turn right now and head towards that line. And you see, um, let's head towards, okay. So I'm headed right towards that line right now. And, uh, and it says I'm going to get there in 6 minutes and 51 seconds. Now, when, the, when that boat gets up to here, I should, this should say I should be there in 5 minutes. Uh, 5 minutes. Uh, no, yeah, uh, 10 minutes for a mile, 5 minutes for, yeah, half a mile. But let's look at what numbers we've got here. It says the distance to the mark is 0.66. So I can actually, you know, you can right-click this and say ruler tool that's going to take it right from the boat. And sure enough, what do we got there? 0.66. So that's what that is. Uh, that's the distance there. And now the cross track error. Oh, ah. Uh, the cross track error before we've got to the first point is probably related. Is, this, is, this doesn't mean much here. Uh, I would say let's, let's, uh, it, it could be related to this mark here where you first started, but I don't know where this first got engaged. I mean, let's leave that for the moment. But here it says that we're making six knots to the mark, and, and you know, we're going six knots and we're making six knots to the mark. If I turn kind of radically over here, you'll see that now if I go like 45 degrees off of the mark, which is something like that, that should be about 0.7. 
Well, 0.7 will be 42. So you see what happens is I'm not making, I'm going six knots still, but my speed to that mark is a lot, is, is only point, is only 3.6. Okay. And so let me come back here now because we're pretty close to right on that uh, five. Okay, look, five minutes and 25 seconds. So it must be like from the center, you know, from the center of this boat. I'm not sure exactly. Oh, you know, there is a way to tell that. And I, that's another, that's more in the advanced course. That's in the advanced topics. Where we can actually tell the program where the GPS is located on the boat. Very important when we're dealing with like bigger vessels or if we want to experiment driving in and out of harbors, uh, which, is, which is interesting. Okay, so in five minutes, it says we're going to be there. Um, now, and then it says that would be, that's, Five ten. So this is like fifteen minutes because this is an hour to get up to there and so forth. And so that's how these ETAs are being predicted. Um, let me. We have some kind of. Okay, I'm going to go in here, edit, and uh, shut off those rings. One two. Shut those rings off. Okay. Now I have. Uh, let's see. Now it looks like something. What is that two pathway? Uh, edit, uh, activate. Let me just turn off the edit the pathway. I don't know. I've got something hanging up on the screen here. Now, if something like this happens, and you you know, I don't know. Something's hung up on the screen. I don't know why that is, and I don't know if I do escape. Uh, I'm just going to, okay, let me just show you something. I'm just going to shut the thing off and turn it back on. Now I'm going to have to uh, turn on the simulation again. Let's see if I just get away with that. I've got the simulation on. I activate this waypoint, activate that. And we should be more or less back where we were. Okay. Now uh, I'll have to just check and I'll make a note and put it in our course about how you, if, the, if you get a, a little screen hang up like that, that's what you do. Okay. So those are the, uh, let me just show one other thing here. I want to show now normally what you would do is we could let's say we want to at this point I really don't need to go here I might as well go up here so what you would do is then right click this and say activate the next waypoint now all the navigation and all this data here is pertinent to this point not that one not that one, you see. So uh, the, we're not making a very good VMC on that. So I've got to turn, you know, turn right to get over there. But now, now the cross track error is going to be something that's a lot more sensible because this is the track. This is clearly the track that I want to be on. And in some cases, in fact, most cases. I'm getting a little bit different topic here. Normally, you wouldn't do that. If you thought, if you set up your route originally to go up this track, then really your job should be not to cut, unless you have other reasons, other data or something, you wouldn't cut the corner and go up here. You'd go over and get on that track and then go up there. But for now, uh, we're, just, we're just doing it that way. Okay, and so let me just show, well, that's 13 minutes. I think I'm going to stop there. There's a few other little odds and ends I want to add, uh, and then, but I'm going to do that later. I don't want the, the individual videos getting too long. But that's the, uh, that's the basic uh, operation of the simulator under power, under power.